so, yeah, my name's Oksana Yashnik. I'm um, the deputy head of diploma program uh, based in the um, IB Global Center in The Hague. Um, and essentially, I oversee the curriculum development uh, across uh, the whole of the diploma program. Um, my own background is that uh, I've come into this after um, over 30 years of teaching uh, in um, a number of different contexts. Uh, most recently, I came, um, I was in Canada for 14 years. Uh, so I taught, uh, actually, I was in an IB school, which started with the authorization process. So my first work was going through the authorization in 2001. Uh, so when I left the school in 2015, we were offering all three programs. So the journey was exciting, challenging, frustrating. Um, but we, you know, and we're still, when I left the school, we still weren't quite there yet. But it, it was a very exciting journey to be on, I have to say. And we all kind of... Um, it was um, the fact that I left, I think, a community of learners and community of practitioners who, um, you know, could see the next four to six years ahead and um, how they were going to develop many aspects of the uh, IB diploma programs. Um, you know, I felt it was actually in very safe hands. My own background is a science, is science. Um, I, uh, in addition to this role, I'm also the curriculum manager for chemistry. Um, I am actually passing that on in a few months, but I've been part of the whole of the sciences review since I started. Uh, some of you may know, or I mean, I did do a, a DP sciences update yesterday in terms of what's coming up in 2022. I will repeat a couple of the slides here so that to make sure that you're kind of aware of, uh, of where things are. Um, as we just have a small group, I would, would actually just love to, just in a you know, couple of minutes, just uh, to hear of your context um, and, you know, and where you're kind of coming from. So um, would that be okay if we just quickly, because we have a small group, and that I think will help uh, in terms of the presentation as well. Um, the other thing I will say is that feel free at any point to ask any questions. This slide deck will be available. Um, so, and I know there are probably burning questions maybe on a number of fronts. So I want to make sure that you leave here with your questions um, answered. I will also give you my card. So if you think of any questions when you're on your, you know, the car going back or on the flight going back, and I'm happy to address uh, anything that you have. So could we just quickly just introduce ourselves so that we understand the context? Yes. My name is Nasri. I'm a mathematics teacher and a MIP. Coordinator at the MBA School for Girls and the Bishop School for Boys. We are currently merging the two schools and we have the four uh, IB programs. Thank you very much. Hi, um, my name is Jo Walker. I also work here in Amman. I work at IAA where I'm head of art. I teach IB Theatre and TOK. I'm an examiner for IB Theatre and I'm in the extended essay coordinator in the school as well. And uh, I've been teaching for 24 years exclusively in schools that have run one or other part of the IB program. Right now we have NYP and DP, not the US. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I'm Andy, and I have a long history of DP. Um, currently I'm serving on the CAS curriculum review, and I've served previously on the history curriculum review. I've been part of nine authorizations of PYP, NYP, and or DP. Um, and I am the director of the school in Cairo, which will be doing all three programs uh, here shortly. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Lima. I'm the development coordinator at the Sun School in Fayette. Um, we're accredited and we're not in the IP next year. Good luck to us. Thank you. My name is Yad. I'm a math teacher at Jubilee School. We start with the IP program. Thank you. Thank you. We're actually representing uh, Deaf Tech Systems from Washington, D.C. Oh. Management Consultant Firm. Excellent. Thank you. Joe Frank. Uh, I'm based in Lebanon. Yep. Uh, I work with the Educational Research Center. Yep. Uh, my background is cancer research. Cancer research. Excellent. I'm uh, Randy Hatfield. I'm an education advisor to Deaf Tech. Investigating free service. Theory and balance coordinator. I teach theater 
and the performance. I think I did a contact over there. Yeah, very good. Yeah. And uh, it came into the World Studies Center. Excellent. Yeah. I should actually have to put you in contact with. Um, oh, thank you very much. Uh, with our curriculum manager for theatre uh, right now. So uh, you know that the theatre is running a pilot next month. So uh, uh, if you email me, I'll make sure that I put you in touch with my team. So it's good to get the theatre. All right. Um, so the uh, evaluation um, uh, process really starts from the first examinations or the first assessment of a new subject. Um, and that's when really that kind of seven year process uh, begins. Um, so um, some of you are already involved in um, uh, development of certain um, IB subjects. Um, just uh, to be aware, I think for those of you who maybe are just kind of starting up in the DP, that there are um, various uh, communication channels where opportunities uh, will be um, advertised for teachers to be involved in curriculum development process. The teacher, the teacher educator is really at the core of the development process. So the coordinator's notes will always have updated opportunities to provide, uh, which um, uh, will, uh, we hope, uh, that you or your, um, your teachers uh, will be able to um, at least um, have the opportunity to see whether they could contribute to the, the curriculum development process. It is actually uh, a process that um, you know, we really value highly uh, at the IB. Um, so the, the way that teachers can be involved, so there are all sorts of possibilities. What I'm going to do is as I quickly run through the slides, I've actually slotted in kind of current opportunities where uh, there may be, uh, you may have uh, teachers um, who would be interested in participating uh, in uh, curriculum review uh, processes. So just a quick one, I think before we begin um, in earnest, I just wanted to do a quick reminder to those schools who are already DP schools. Um, first thing to bear in mind is that uh, we issued a history update last year and uh, they were not major changes, they were more clarifications really just to ensure that uh, the document, the guide, uh, was, was absolutely crystal clear for teachers. There were some uh, minor errors. Those have all been removed. Um, our curriculum manager, I think, did an extensive communication um, 
uh, kind of had, had communication process last year. So a reminder that um, the amended guide is for all examinations from May 2020 onwards. You're not going to see um, you know, particular differences, but just to make sure that the teachers, your teachers are working with the updated history guide um, for first examinations in 2020. Uh, does anyone offer psychology here? Because if not, oh, you do. Uh, so a quick uh, overview of some of the changes in psychology. Um, you may remember there were formal notifications that were issued last year. Um, and essentially, it was really just to clarify, again, the scope of assessment, particularly with respect to, I think, paper one. Um, there were two documents uh, which were published, which I, I were absolutely critical reading for psychology teachers, the FAQ, the Frequently Asked Questions, and also a document which clarified the external assessment uh, as well. Um, there is uh, an update from the curriculum manager. We do have a new curriculum manager for psychology, and she's been doing some incredible work. Uh, with teacher educators. They literally had a meeting about three weeks ago and a whole suite of new teacher support materials uh, will be um, uh, uh, posted uh, and I think it will be next month. So, um, and the, the teacher support materials, again, you'll see this on the slide. Uh, it's teaching the core, the options, how to integrate approaches to teaching and learning uh, in the psychology. So those will be published on the uh, program Resource Center, the PRC, uh, in um, April. Does anyone offer design technology? Yeah. So uh, you're probably, I'm sure, aware of these changes. Uh, again, the updated guide. Uh, that guide is the guide that teachers should be using for first examinations in 2020. Um, so there is, um, there are changes to the word count and there are changes to the page count. So that's important for uh, teachers to be aware of that. Okay, um, a quick update uh, on the current sciences. Um, from this May, this examination session, um, the forms, the PSOW, which stands for Practical Scheme of Work, and that's really the list of all the um, practical activities that science students um, have had the experience of over their two years, as well as the form ICCS, and that's the form that goes with the um, uh, Group 4 project. Those are no longer to be uploaded, um, but of course schools should keep them because they are a record of the, particularly the PSOW, of the practical program. And if there is an evaluation, then it is important uh, that that record of practical work is, uh, is there. Sorry? Um, yes, I mean, as long as, so, you know, in an evaluation kind of visit, um, uh, you know, you may be asked to talk about, because you're coming from the chemistry perspective, you may be asked to talk about, well, you know, what's your kind of lab program? How do you design a lab program? Because it's not just about the IA, it's not just about the internal assessment. The student work will be submitted by the sampling process as usual. It's just that you don't have to submit the forms. That's all. Okay. Is that, everyone okay with that? Um, another quick, um, actually I did want to, sorry, another quick update is that for chemistry and physics, higher level paper two, um, that paper has been reduced from 95 to 90 marks. We had a lot of feedback from teachers via the, the grade awarding uh, process that the paper was far too long. Um, and so both chemistry and physics, higher level paper two, uh, will have five fewer marks. On the program resource center, there are updated specimen papers. Again, you're not gonna see much difference, um, but certainly the updated specimen papers, um, if you are planning to use those possibly for mock exams or trial exams, they actually have the right timing uh, associated with them. Um, okay, so you may have seen, those of you kind of in DP schools, that we did issue uh, a rescheduled um, update for DP subjects. So you are uh, no doubt aware that the first year of teaching for language ab initio started in 2018. You are also very well aware that from 
2019, August, May 2019, um, mathematics and studies in language and literature begin their new iteration of the courses. So uh, 2019, mathematics, studies in language and literature. 2020 um, will be the first teaching of the new theory of knowledge course, um, economics and music. So just a quick reminder, particularly uh, for those of you who maybe uh, are not in a DP school, is that the first year of teaching, sorry, the first year of assessment is two years after the first year of teaching. So mathematics courses start in 2019, the new courses, the first examination suite, the first assessment is 2021. And that is true for studies in Lang and Lit. Uh, 2021, as you can see, um, there we have six subjects. One of the reasons we had to reschedule uh, the sciences, the sciences were originally scheduled in 21, is that for 2021, there were going to be 10 subjects which would be new. And that is from a school's perspective. If, um, I mean, I don't think a school would offer all 10. Uh, but certainly, in terms of our research, there are a significant number of schools who would actually be offering seven of those ten original subjects. Um, so this was taken to our senior leadership team, and the decision was made to uh, at least you know, reduce the number of subjects for 21. So the subjects that have moved to 22, uh, biology, uh, chemistry, physics, and business management. So those are the four courses that have moved to uh, 2022. Of course. Of course. Correct. So lit and performance, um, and that's actually, that's a very good point because literature and performance um, was essentially up to a certain point, up to the point at which the studies in language and literature uh, review had been completed they'd actually worked very much as a team. So uh, certainly from the literature perspective, there are going to be commonalities with the current stand, uh, studies in, uh, in literature and language. Um, and we had actually the consistent, uh, Ryan Joyce, who was the curriculum manager for literature and performance, um, was present in almost every meeting of the studies in language and literature. Um, so yes, yeah, so literature and performance, it's actually almost towards the end of its review now. Um, so. They have about, where are we, March? Um, so they have to have their guide completed by the end of this year. Yeah, again, a very good question, because this is coming up with math and studies in language and literature. Um, in terms of the new guide, so if I take mathematics right now as our example, um, the training for the new courses always begins in February of the first year of teaching. So the mathematics workshops, the, the, we call them subject-specific seminars. Um, these are the workshops there where the new courses are uh, presented and um, discussed. Um, those courses are actually, those workshops are going on right now. So for literature and performance, the new workshops, the SSS, would not be in place until February of 2021. Any questions on the schedule? Okay, um, very quickly, uh, the only reason I'm mentioning this, we're not going back in time, um, and that is because um, for the subjects that were for first teaching two years ago, have their first examinations in 2019. So film, geography, psychology, uh, social and cultural anthropology, those subjects have their first examinations this May. So I guess it's just a call out just to make sure that your teachers have the, using the right documentation. There are reminders, I think, in the coordinator's notes. Uh, so the first examination session uh, it will be uh, this, uh, this May. Um, so moving to uh, subjects which started their first teaching in uh, 2018. And, of course, uh, this was um, uh, language ab initio and uh, language B. The first assessment is next year. So first assessment is uh, 2020. 
Um, I did actually, when I checked with the curriculum manager, I did actually want to just show you a couple of um, updates um, around uh, language uh, acquisi uh, acquisition. So the assessment support. From the first assessment, the types of texts uh, which will be provided as you know, choices for language B uh, and language ab initio paper one task are actually posted, um, and I think they've been updated, but they're actually posted now uh, on the uh, PRC. Um, so that's what it looks like. I only just managed to do a clip of the, um, of the kind of the first part of this. It's fairly extensive. Um, so they are available on the Program Resource Center. Uh, the other thing I did want to mention is that um, all the ab initio courses are supported by language-specific syllabuses. And again, if you go on the uh, PRC, the Program Resource Center, again, I've just done a quick um, kind of snapshot of the first half of the document, but those are specific, I'm just going to mention here, those are the specific uh, LSSs, the language-specific uh, syllabi. So those, those are uh, available. Um, Okay, so moving to 2019. So 2019, we recognize is, uh, you know, it's an exciting year, but it's a big year for schools. Um, and, uh, and certainly, I, I think just, I think for us, we, um, I, I have um, a regular contact with the two curriculum managers, one for mathematics and one for studies in language and literature, who are actually supporting uh, all the subject-specific seminars in mathematics. So you can imagine how many there are. Um, and so I, I do get kind of updates in terms of um, kind of the questions, how those subject-specific seminars uh, are going. Uh, and I think generally, I have to say, change, is, change always comes with its anxieties and challenges. But at the same time, I think I can safely say that for both studies in Lang and Lit and the math courses, um, that there is a lot of excitement about the, um, uh, the, the new uh, curricula uh, moving forward from uh, later this year. So um, I'm just going to do a kind of a quick overview. Um, and again, as I said, these, these slides are available. Um, starting with the studies uh, in uh, language and uh, literature, um, you will see this curriculum model quite a lot now. I think if you look at any curriculum update, every subject actually has a, a curriculum model that really shows the the, the, the place of uh, the subject you know, within the whole IB uh, diploma. The new guides, I'm just going to move to this next slide. Uh, the new guides um, are already published. The new guides were published in February of uh, this year. And um, so you can see that the guide, um, the in practice, so that includes some of the teacher support material, as well as all the guidance for assessment, all of that is now on the Program Resource Center. Um, the teacher support materials, there is, a, um, uh, there is a fair amount of teacher support materials posted already. There is a second wave of teacher support materials that will be posted in uh, April, so that they're almost completed, but they will be posted uh, very uh, shortly. Um, the only other developments that I kind of wanted to mention here um, is, uh, and I will actually again give you a snapshot of the prescribed reading list. Um, that is already kind of up there on the PRC. Um, it seems, when I checked yesterday, it had kind of a beta form. So, but it is working. If you're looking at different texts and different genres uh, of text, uh, that functionality uh, is up and running. Um, so obviously, this is, this is really the key, um, the key resource for um, your teachers. So very important that, of course, um, they start to engage with this uh, as soon as uh, is possible. Uh, just a kind of quick overview of, of what's changing. Um, I'm just going to pick out a couple of things because we're just going to address this uh, um, in a few minutes as we kind of run through the slides. I think one of the major differences is that um, there is much greater consistency within the subject group. The aims 
are the same. The assessment objectives uh, are the same. Um, so the emphasis on conceptual understanding is the same throughout uh, all those subjects. So the literature, the literature, um, so language and literature. Um, and actually, you're going to find the same in the literature and performance courses which come out in uh, 2021. The other, um, I think, major change here is really giving um, the schools, the students, the teachers much more choice in terms of texts, in terms of genres of text. Um, and you will see that, actually, if you go into the prescribed reading list, if your teachers go into there, we, uh, uh, there are significant, uh, some significant changes in terms of the genres of texts that um, students are able to use uh, for this course. The final, um, I think, major change is that the assessment model is simpler, it's much, it's much easier for even teachers new to teaching, teachers new to the DP uh, will find the assessment model, uh, there was, there's a clarity of that assessment model that there wasn't um, before. So um, just a quick kind of summary, a common structure to both subjects, um, three areas of exploration um, will be the same for uh, both of those subjects. Um, we also have uh, seven central concepts and these concepts are uh, common to uh, literature and language and literature. The areas of exploration, they're not tied to a particular assessment component, so that is, is uh, new as well. And the internal assessment, um, no longer an impromptu commentary. This is something that the students can prepare for. So they will, it's an individual oral, students explore two texts in relation to a global issue. And of course the global issue aspect is new to these courses as well. Um, paper one and paper two will assess the same skills as the present papers, so there aren't actually going to be uh, any significant uh, differences uh, in, uh, in that case. Um, and the paper one will have a very similar structure, both for the language uh, and literature and for the uh, literature courses themselves. And the last thing I should mention is that the higher level courses will have a fourth component. Um, this actually proved to be quite challenging for the curriculum development team because, of course, if you introduce a component, you want to make sure it's assessing something that the other components do not assess. Okay, there's no point in assessing the same thing twice, three times. So what this component is going to assess, um, it's going to assess research uh, skills. It's going to assess um, citation. It's going to assess editing. Um, and it will require students to explore just one of the texts, so one of the texts that they've studied, in the light of whatever inquiry they have selected for their choice. So the actual skills, um, research, citation, editing, uh, will be the skills that will be assessed via this higher level paper four. Uh, uh, yes, fourth component, paper three. Um, the, high, the, the fourth component, is, it is actually, it's a higher level essay, so, um, so it will be done in the student's own time. Yes. Well, no, this, this particular one, this is actually um, the, the higher level essay, oh, sorry, let me just go back to, uh, go back to this. Um, this actually is a, this is an examination, this is an examination paper. So, yeah. The internal assessment is the oral. Sorry, yes, I didn't make that clear. This is actually an examination paper, so all of these last slides refer to examination papers. Yeah. The prescribed reading list, um, extensive piece of work. We had, I think, every examiner in every language um, that this course is offered uh, contribute to uh, this list. 55 different languages, um, uh, the recommendations, all of this is given in the guide. Um, but I wanted just to show you, um, it, it doesn't, doesn't matter that you can't read this. When you go onto the Program Resource Center, um, you can actually select your, um, you can actually select the, um, uh, the, the book um, or the, 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 the literature, um, either by language or by country or by genre or by author. 
Um, so this is working. This is something that um, I think is going to be, um, you know, really kind of quite critical uh, in terms of becoming familiar with what is actually available, you know, in this prescribed reading list. So that is current. That is working. That is on the program resource centre. So all the um, all the books are there. Yes. Correct. Exactly. Yes. Yes. No. The old PLA, PLT, that's, that's gone. Um, the current guide. Yes. Correct. Correct. I know it's always very difficult. Again, it's, it's, it's an interesting point. It's always very difficult when, particularly when you have subjects in a particular group, and there's a group of subjects that have, you know, have moved on. Literature and performance, of course, is, you know, it's, it's getting there. So it will be, it will be um, obviously, new for teaching in 21. I would actually uh, suggest, um, if you wanted to know, there's nothing we can do but just carry on with the current syllabus, obviously. Um, but if you go onto the Program Resource Center, you will see um, um, a, a kind of um, a file, uh, a menu, which says curriculum review reports. And if you go into those reports, those reports will give you an update on uh, where the curriculum development of the subject is right now. So literature and performance, I think, if it, one hasn't gone up in the last month, I think there is one due for lit and performance because they're coming to, say, towards the end of their uh, development. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time because obviously I'm, I know that we have to finish, but um, um, it hasn't proved to be any, there haven't really proved to be any issues with university recognition in terms of language, um, uh, studies in language and literature. Um, okay, all of that really is in the, uh, in the guides in terms of the pathways um, into DP studies in Lang and Lit. Um, again, don't worry if you can't read this. This is just a list of the teacher support materials, um, including videos, including how to use the prescribed reading list, uh, sample papers, specimen papers, student exemplars, everything that you would expect and more. Also, how do you plan for the teaching and learning? How do you plan the actual units of study? Um, so all of that is in the teacher support material on the um, PRC. Okay, so new for 2019 mathematics. Just going to make sure I'm on the right uh, slide here. Yeah. So um, first teaching for the mathematics courses 2019 uh, and first assessment uh, 2021. Um, I think you're probably aware there have been a fair number of communications around the new mathematics courses. Uh, the current subjects for mathematics will continue until November 2020. So the further math, math HLSL, math studies, all of those examinations, the last examination session will be November 2020. So May 21 will be the first assessment of the new mathematics courses. Um, the two courses, um, so first of all, I think if we look at, um, again, there's a lot of text here, so I, I've got some uh, graphics which I hope to show you. Um, the titles of the courses really are meant to say what, what, what's in the tin, in other words. So if we look at the first course, the uh, uh, analysis uh, and approaches, um, the course isn't just, it's not just purely analytical, it's not just purely uh, algebraic, uh, it does include graphical, technological, um, and also kind of contextual approaches. But it just really highlights where the focus of those math courses, um, that particular math course will be. In terms of the second course, the applications uh, and interpretation, I would say actually interpretation is probably the key uh, word for this course. Um, so that is important to highlight um, the statistical awareness, the focus on statistics is much greater uh, in this course, um, and also the application of technology um, is much more, 
not to say that the analysis doesn't have that, but the focus for application of technology uh, is much greater uh, in, uh, in this case. Again, the familiar uh, kind of conceptual roadmap here. Um, just to give you a quick overview of where we've had teacher input all the way through the math curriculum uh, development. A quick overview of the rationale of changes. Um, and I think the first change has to be that um, essentially we needed to make these changes based on um, the skills that we want our students to have. Uh, really, all the research that was carried out, um, uh, certainly in terms of the uh, world of work, universities, the role of technology, the application of technology, and particularly, I think, the, the, um, the much more important focus that um, universities and industries are giving to the application of mathematics skills. So it's the applied mathematics uh, that is really, I think, um, going to make quite a difference here. Um, we also had to address the very low uptake of students taking higher level mathematics. Um, and so we wanted to make those courses accessible without reducing the rigor, but modernizing them, ensuring that there was a much greater use of technology. Um, so, um, so the low uptake of math, I think, was one that, something that we did have to, have to look at. Um, perception with mathematical studies, uh, some of you may be aware that there, there have been in the past some recognition, recognition issues with mathematic, uh, mathematical studies, even though, if it was, even though it was an SL, um, because of the nature of the course, um, it did provide some challenges in certain parts of the world. And finally, Flexibility. I mean, we are aware that schools teach diploma um, courses in a variety of contexts. I mean, you may have ministry expectations. You've got state, provincial expectations. I worked in Toronto for 14 years, and I had to, I had to teach. We were teaching the DP, but I had to have a separate mark book. I had to have separate unit plans for the Ministry of Ontario expectations. So when we were, um, uh, when we were inspected by the ministry, they don't want to see anything to do with the DP. When you have your evaluation visit, they don't want to see anything to do with the Ministry of Ed. They exactly. Well, this was the Ontario, but Alberta is exactly the same. So, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now we were able to. Well, um, I'm not sure about Alberta, but Ontario didn't have any external examinations. Few. Thank goodness. So that means that the students would just take their diploma courses, um, and we were able to align. Yeah. Yeah. They do. Um, Alberta, I think, will. Correct. Correct. But in terms of students um, from the, the, the province that I know, um, in terms of Ontario, they would finish their two years and actually have two diplomas because we were able to align all the content, all the courses um, pretty well. Um, similarly in Alberta, I don't think Alberta has any external examinations anymore, but I, I can check on that. We have some recognition colleagues okay. here. Okay. Correct, correct, yeah. Um, this just gives um, a, quick, sorry, a quick overview of uh, the courses. Again, I'm, uh, I'm, I don't expect you to read these. Just a kind of a quick overview of the syllabus uh, outline. What I did want to show you uh, was this graphic. And this graphic just gives you the curriculum model uh, at, uh, at a glance. And I think um, what really kind of comes out from this is if we look at what we have, we've got applications SL, applications HL, analysis SL, and analysis um, HL. I think you can see certainly that uh, in terms of statistics, the applications, this, these are the yellow bars, um, much greater in terms of the proportion of uh, content. So certainly the applications SL, applications HL um, have much greater emphasis on not just statistics but also modeling. If I build on this chart and the previous slide, um, you mentioned that, well, the one before that. Oh, the one before that. The flexibility for schools on the way they schedule that. Yes. Now, as far as I know, there will not be any common question between the application and the analysis, uh, because the, the focus is different, the yeah. approach is different. Um, but one of the rationale for the change is to give the schools flexibility the way they schedule it. Yeah. Is it wise, do you think, to schedule uh, uh, applications and analysis courses together? Mm -hmm. I mean, 
it's, it's, not a, it's not a difficult to answer that question because yep. the idea of telling us there are no identical questions. Mm -hmm. So how can I put the same students in the same thing? Yeah. Um, ha have you had a look at the specimen questions for the SL? Yeah. I, I the so, yeah. so there you go. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I think, um, well, the, the, the first thing, if I can just go back one, one um, kind of stage here, and that is that in terms of common material, there is 60 hours of common standard level material between the apps SL and between the, uh, um, the analysis SL. Um, so, so I know that there have been, there are some, um, you probably are aware of these, there are some kind of posters that show how you can maybe uh, teach those students together for a certain period of time and then see which direction they might want to be, you know, are they veering more towards the applications or more towards the analysis courses. Um, in terms of the examination papers, um, you're right, I mean the focus, you know, the focus is different. The 60 hours of core really reflects those core mathematical uh, principles. Um, I, you know, I'm not sure what kind of, you know, how the curriculum manager kind of address this, you know, with the, with the workshop leaders. Um, I think in terms of that 60 hours, um, you can still set, because it's that initial, you know, I'm talking about kind of the initial foundation of mathematics, you can really still set the same questions as formative assessment, um, maybe even tests and quizzes. Uh, certainly, anything outside of that, the, the focus will change, and that's obviously showing the two different routes. Uh, in terms of the change, the, the difference in, uh, in the examination papers. Um, I think we'll, well, let's wait to hear, I think, from the schools. Let's wait to hear what the implementation challenges are. Um, clearly, um, as we begin the teaching of mathematics courses, we're going to be engaging through our IB World schools, you know, through IB Answers in terms of, you know, what's working, what's not working. Uh, and that's all part of what we do. It's all part of that curriculum development process. Um, but obviously you've heard it because from the workshop perspective, you're, you know, you're, that's something that has come your way in terms of any concerns. Um, I'm very happy to give you the um, email for the curriculum manager for mathematics um, if you have specific questions. I'm really happy to help you with that. Yeah. Uh, a couple of other things to mention here is the toolkit. And the toolkit is a... Um, uh, the toolkit is a 30-hour time allocation um, to the development of specific skills for all math students. Um, so whether it's problem-solving skills, whether it's collaboration, uh, you know, we're not assessing collaboration formally, but the actual, you know, the experience of collaboration, of authentic collaboration, is really very important. Um, I, I'd say to any courses, whether it's sciences, whether it's math, whether it's uh, theatre, uh, and so on. Uh, within that 30 hours, there is some flexibility. So within that 30, I mean, you know, you know better than I, there is some flexibility there. In addition to the internal assessment, um, the teachers can really design their own kind of skill progression or their own plan for skill progression of their students uh, in terms of those kind of key mathematics skills. It could reflect, it would reflect your local context, it could reflect, um, you know, the, the cohort that you have. Um, the internal assessment hasn't changed that much. So that is uh, something that the teachers will be very familiar with. Um, and it's just an exploration of mathematics uh, chosen uh, by the student. And again, higher level paper three is a one hour. Again, another challenge for the math curriculum team. What are we going to assess in that one hour that we expect higher level students to have in terms of skills, uh, in terms of their kind of um, uh, competences that is not already assessed extensively. And so this is a problem solving uh, sustained reasoning uh, paper. Um, the guide, both guides are published. So again, if you go onto the PRC, um, the same, um, I'll also mention the same um, aspect of teacher support material. Most of the teacher support material is up there, but we're also waiting for a second wave of math teacher support material, uh, which will be uploaded, I think, April, uh, again, as with studies in language and literature. Uh, but all of those resources are uh, already up there. I'm just going to go through this. Uh, sorry, I have this. 
Um, the common IA, so um, uh, math teachers in your schools will be fairly familiar, I think, with the uh, internal assessment. Um, there are further details. We did actually some fairly extensive trialing with the new internal assessment, and because there was some concern that mathematics studies students, um, we wanted to make sure that they would not disadvantage through this slightly um, uh, amended model. And in fact, the mathematical studies students, um, their current IAs marked against the new criteria actually performed better. Um, and so the curriculum manager does uh, share some of that uh, data analysis uh, in, the, uh, in the report. A uh, quick overview of teacher support materials. Um, and again, if you wanted to have more detail in terms of the curriculum review, uh, that's what it looks like on the PRC. So all the reports to teachers really kind of documenting some of the discussions, the challenges, and the updates for uh, curriculum review are there. Um, in terms of university recognition, this is still an ongoing um, uh, process. Um, but uh, I think you'll find that if you go onto the ibo.org, IBO uh, that particular link, all the updates in terms of recognition are posted as we get them. Um, it is interesting, I was just sitting in on Pete Fitchuk's and John Halligan's, this is our recognition team from um, um, uh, well, from The Hague in the UK. Um, and um, there, it is interesting to, to see um, the way that the universities are certainly viewing the applications course. Uh, so, for example, um, Imperial College, for um, most of their engineering courses, actually, are accepting either analysis or the applications. In some cases, they express a preference for the analysis, um, but it is interesting to, to see. I think our recognition team are, they're talking literally as we speak to uh, universities in, uh, in every region. Um, if you have any recognition questions, um, please feel free to email either via uh, IB World Schools, but do check in on this. I also gather, um, you might know this actually, that um, one of our educators, if you go onto the math communities pages, she's actually started a um, updating a list of recognition uh, updates um, from universities all around the world. So she's actually kind of put them on one document. Are you, are you aware of that? Seen that? You've seen that? Seen yeah. yeah, so I, I got that from the, our curriculum manager uh, a few days ago. So um, uh, pathways into mathematics. Um, just so that you know, the MYP mathematics, um, the curriculum managers for MYP maths, as well as obviously our DP curriculum managers have worked closely really from the beginning of this uh, process. Uh, so as the MYP mathematics is released for 2020, uh, you will see a much greater alignment um, between the MYP and the DP. So, because that's, as we know, it's a challenge. I mean, I'm speaking with my science hat on, uh, where um, it's in previous years, it has been challenging to move from you know, the MYP approach uh, to science, to the DP, but again, much, there's much more cross-program um, collaboration, um, and I'm actually including PYP in this as well. So, I'm CP. Um, I think with the MYP, if you go into the MYP pages, no, it's not, it's not up there. Okay, so I will check with Sarah Phillips, actually, who is our senior MYP manager. I will check with her. Is it not on the... Uh, no, just, just to say that we were in favor of the last update the new paper and guide the Ah, yes, that's true. Oh, okay, the new... Yeah. But then, if the video is starting and you want to... Talk, yeah. Is the MYP, I haven't seen the MYP report. Does that not have a list of topics? Doesn't have a list of, there's nothing. Okay, that's actually a good point. I will take that back um, and uh, hopefully get a, an update for you. Um, what uh, happened in this case is that the last report to teachers for DP went out last year. And it was good because it had all the topics so that schools, we know that schools plan three years ahead. 
so that it had all the topics, um, the new topics for mathematics. Uh, I will absolutely take that back for NYP, but thank you for, thank you for raising that. Okay. Um, I'm just kind of conscious of time. We have about, okay, we're still okay, we have 20 minutes or so. Um, just in terms of workshops, so we have uh, the subject-specific seminars are running now. There are no workshops for the current math courses. All the workshops now are for the new mathematics courses. Uh, there will be CAT3 internal assessment uh, workshops, and there will be thank you. There will be workshops on the use of um, technology as well. I think they're already advertised on the uh, ibo.org professional development uh, page. And if you wanted to listen to the webinars. Uh, which our curriculum managers, both for mathematics and for studies in language and literature, um, participated in with uh, hundreds of educators. Um, these are actually available um, in, in English and uh, in Spanish. Okay, I'm going to mention uh, first teaching in 2020, um, really from this perspective, um, theory of knowledge. And um, so the theory of knowledge, first teaching in 2020, so that would mean first assessment in uh, 2022. Um, just going to find my, make sure we've got that, yeah. Um, there are updates, again, on the curriculum review, um, uh, where, uh, and where TOK uh, is going. Um, if you look at the areas of knowledge, those of you who are very familiar with TOK, what's missing? Does anyone know what's missing in the areas of knowledge? You know. Ethics, yeah. The big one is ethics. Um, and the others are kind of integrated in a different way, but ethics is a big one. Uh, it doesn't mean to say that ethics has gone. Ethics now actually will underpin every single um, area of knowledge there. So it's actually a compulsory part of every topic, which I think is a, is a, is a really, good, really good move. Um, and just a quick overview of um, the uh, internal assessment. Again, many of you who are in schools, um, you know, I think recognize the, the great possibilities that TOK assessment um, can provide for students, but also recognize some of the challenges uh, as well. Um, and there is a new internal assessment task, and this is actually outlined in the um, latest report uh, for TOK on the PRC. And it will be um, replacing the current oral presentation uh, and moderation process. And it will be the curation of uh, what we're calling the TOK exhibition. And um, there will be, uh, this I think is actually, uh, and I've taught TOK before as well, I think having 30 IA prompts. These are 30 kind of knowledge questions. They're not going to be changing every year. They are fixed for the duration of this curriculum, uh, the, the new uh, TOK curriculum. And students will select one of those questions and curate um, an exhibition of um, whatever object they see uh, fit to show how this particular knowledge question uh, manifests in the real world uh, around them. Um, and all they do at the end, they submit a single file containing the images of their three objects, um, and then any commentaries, justifications, any narrative that really supports their exhibition. We have trialed this fairly extensively. Um, and the latest trial, we had to do trial, we did uh, two phases of the trial. Um, the latest trial, um, I think, has, has really addressed some of the reliability uh, assessment issues. Um, the good thing about trialing is that we actually have authentic student samples that we can then provide as exemplars. Because uh, often you have to wait, um, you know, two years before you get your real kind of authentic student example, examples. Um, so that's something that I know Jenny Gillett, who is the curriculum manager for uh, TOK, uh, is, um, uh, is literally working on as, as we speak. So, um, so that's, I think that's a fairly kind of exciting um, uh, change to, uh, to TOK. 
Um, the, other, the other subjects were first teaching and learning for 2020, economics. Um, and there are a whole host of slides on economics, which I'm not going to go through right now. Um, but I just kind of wanted you to be aware of yet again. So we have our kind of conceptual model. Um, quick overview, a much more conceptual approach to teaching and learning. So um, there are key concepts that will be introduced in the course. Um, I'm just going to skip through these. Uh, contemporary content, so it's been updated. It's been um, certainly, for example, the, sustainment, uh, the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, the SDGs, uh, and um, the Circular Economy Systems Thinking. Um, and the four syllabus units are going to be as uh, follows. And I'm just going to run through these quickly. Um, and uh, finally, for 2020, uh, music. So music is also a new course for uh, 2020. Um, this is actually very exciting. It's much more, I think it's a much more practical course than the, the current course. Uh, it certainly um, is a much more integrated curriculum. And the key area is really about the exploration of music. Um, experimenting, presenting, and contemporary music making. So it's not really just for the musical practitioners. Um, so this is actually, again, there is a report on the uh, PRC, uh, which uh, details, I think, some of the changes, uh, which I think are fairly exciting. I have to say, actually, that the arts uh, curriculum managers have been working very closely. So theatre, music, film, and uh, dance, um, Joel Adams, who you may have gone to his session, um, the pre-con session, he is also the curriculum manager for visual arts. Uh, so that group of curriculum managers actually works very closely in terms of uh, creating, I think, a much more um, kind of exciting vision for the arts. Um, and um, so a DP Dance, also first teaching in 21. Theatre, new teaching, uh, new course for first teaching in 21. Um, but essentially, the alignment in the arts is something that I hope that your, uh, the arts teachers are really going to be seeing in the next uh, two to three years. Okay, um, I just wanted to um, ask you if there were any um, outstanding questions. Um, we've got about, so we've got about 15 minutes. Um, I've got other subjects that if you wanted to have an update on, you can just let me know and I can just kind of fast forward knowing that I've got about 15 minutes. Um, I've got updates on, um, I think, digital society. Um, that's, I think that's the next one coming up. And then I've also got some updates on the sciences and the way that the sciences have, are moving. Is there anything in particular that you would like me to address in terms of questions, in terms of any specific updates, um, just to make sure that I've addressed all of those? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so the nature of science is an interesting one. Um, uh, when I first came to The Hague, I actually looked after the nature of science for about a year. Um, and the nature of science is a pilot. And the original intent of the design of nature of science was really uh, to appeal to students for whom, um, you know, they weren't that particularly interested in science, but for whom this would probably be a last experience of science before they moved to, uh, you know, to further study. Um, so that pilot is still going, and it will, uh, we, I think we're releasing um, some communication about NOS very soon. Um, we have about 220 students uh, involved in the pilot. Um, and the one area that we have to look at is developing the nature of science so that it actually aligns well with the way that the new science courses are moving. And that's really where we're at right now. So we've had a number of curriculum development meetings for nature of science. A um, couple of quick pieces of feedback. Some of the feedback from teachers was, well, it's actually, there's a lot of physics in the nature of science. Uh, and actually, as a scientist, I think, yes, there's very little chemistry. So um, should this really be about you know, physics, chemistry, and biology? Or should this really be about some of the broader concepts 
um, of, say, modeling and giving some examples across the sciences of where, you know, you would use computational modeling or where, um, you know, really what the nature of a scientific investigation is rather than hard facts. Uh, our science curricula are moving in a much more conceptual approach. I'm very happy to share a couple of slides if, 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 you're, if that's where you want, want to see it. Um, so I would say there's no kind of, there's no news in terms of it going mainstream as yet. Um, we want to make sure that we, whatever we produce, we get it right. Um, so, um, but the curriculum manager for nature of science is also involved in the current um, sciences development. So we want to make sh sure that whatever suite of sciences we release, that they do have that common conceptual framework. So, um, but yeah, but we have some very engaged teachers with that particular pilot. The, the big history, uh, that's a good question actually. Um, I'm not sure that project has moved on uh, in the last couple of years. Uh, we have a new curriculum manager for uh, history about oh, a year and a half, two years. Um, I can check with him to see where that is. But it hasn't developed into any, you know, we don't have an SBS uh, uh, a school-based syllabus in that, um, so I'm not quite sure where we are with that. The idea was uh, to present history as a sort of big overview. The big history project. The big bang, then to move on. The big yeah. Of <laughs> <laughs> so, well, like, of time, uh, I think it was more, yeah. It was almost kind of, it was, it was quite interdisciplinary, I have to say. So even though it was called Big History, there, were, it, you know, there, was, there was actually a fair amount of science in there um, uh, as well. So it was, um, uh, nothing has really happened on that front. But what is happening is we are exploring, um, how many of you offer ex um, ESS, which is Environmental Systems and Societies? So um, I'm sure you're aware that we, we're actually exploring the higher level. We're actually developing a higher level for uh, ESS. And uh, literature and performance is another interdisciplinary course. Thank you. Um, but what we want to do is to make sure that we have a robust interdisciplinary framework on which to build those two courses and the framework that we can then use to build other potential interdisciplinary courses um, so so that's that's kind of where we are but the project that you refer to to my mind when I saw it it seemed like a it seemed almost like an NYP interdisciplinary unit actually but yeah Hi. yes Interdisciplinary, yes. Exactly. Yes, yes, yeah. And actually, Robin Julian, who is the curriculum manager, is part of our kind of interdisciplinary group. So Robin, Joel, who you might know from the, you know, from the um, uh, pre-con, um, myself. There's about four of us. The psychology curriculum manager, because psychology again is another subject that. Uh, you know, potentially has some really interesting interdisciplinary uh, links. So, um, so yeah. So that's that, that's that's. It's actually quite exciting, I think, to see where where this will go with extended essay and uh, with some of the other subjects as well. Yeah. Any other questions? How about? Um, oh, there we go. Literature and performance. I didn't know this slide was coming up. I I took it up because I'm behind on my, my iPad here. Uh, a new vision of interdisciplinarity for the literature and performance course. So there's... Not for the next, uh, not for this next iteration, no. Um, they, they do want to explore, the curriculum manager wants to explore uh, what an HL potentially could look like. And I think once we have an interdisciplinary kind of base, um, if he develops that, it wouldn't be that difficult then to build the HL on top of that. Because you know, you need to have a framework. So if you have an interdisciplinary framework, you will be able to build um, uh, the HL on top of that. Yeah. 
Yes. Yep. Yes. The HL. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think that's something that certainly that's that's come through, um, uh, I think, quite clearly. But um, we'll see. I mean, I think for 21, it will be SL. But for the next iteration, I think for, for, for certain uh, HL. Um, there's just a quick overview of classical languages. Um, I mean, Digital Society, of course, is a very exciting uh, course for the humanities. Um, and uh, you've probably heard a little bit about the. I think David Homer today, actually, he, um, he really kind of underpinned uh, in the plenary, really kind of what's going to underpin this course in terms of um, the, uh, the digital era that we are living in. Um, so I'm just going to go through that. He said, these, are, these will all be available, uh, these slides. Um, but I did want to just quickly uh, mention the sciences. Okay, so I'm sorry, I have a. I, I feel like I can't complete this without actually mentioning uh, what's happening with the sciences. Uh, the current iteration, of course, um, uh, biology, chemistry, and physics. Um, the last assessment will be um, last assessment will be November uh, 21. Um, so those are the sciences. This actually shows the environmental systems um, as well. So the environmental systems, sports. Does anyone offer sports, exercise, and health science? Yeah, no. Nope. So they're 23. Um, design technology uh, will be offered um, in uh, 23 together with environmental systems and um, uh, sports and exercise and health science. The thing about the sciences, um, and I did this in my presentation on the sciences yesterday, is that whatever we design uh, for biology, chemistry, and physics, so I've just had those three, which are kind of the core sciences that we're working on, um, the last assessment of the new courses will be November 2030. So in terms of future-proofing the courses, in terms of Focusing on the skills, focusing on the competences, that's really been a very big uh, part of this curriculum development process. And I've been part of this from the beginning. So these are the kind of questions that we had to ask ourselves. Um, you know, how do we provide opportunities to really um, leverage technology? And by that, I mean, you know, what does that actually mean? How would it facilitate collaboration in the sciences? How will it really impact the way that students learn? Um, how will it impact um, the personalization of learning? Everyone learns in a very different way. So, um, so these are some of the... Uh, I'm just going to actually move on to uh, this slide and uh, one more slide that I'll show you. Um, science content, there's a lot of it. You probably hear that from your biology teachers, uh, chemistry maybe less so, um, but there is a lot of content um, in these courses. So one of the first things that we've done is we have reduced, we've revised, we've updated, and we've reframed uh, the content. Um, and the syllabus is being developed that promotes um, the conceptual understanding and really the ability of students to link concepts uh, to each other. Um, don't worry about this. This is actually, uh, this is what chemistry is, is looking like right now. So we have two concepts in chemistry, uh, structure and reactivity. Um, and those two concepts are really kind of driving, um, I guess what we'd call the, the meta concepts, um, which are shown, uh, there's really kind of six of those. There's a quick overview of physics. But what I did want to mention was uh, this slide which gives you, again, just looking at time, um, this slide, which um, gives you uh, two pieces of information, really. One is that the science skills are going to be much more explicit than they are now. Thank you. So there will be a complete document. So for physics right now, uh, we have a document that lists all the skills, and they are linked to ATL. They're linked to the approaches to uh, learning um, so that teachers are able to have it in one place. Because right now, if you look at the guides, they're kind of 
all over the place, but we've actually crystallized all those key skills that we expect our students to have. So my last slide um, here for the sciences um, is that we have removed the options. So the sciences will have, uh, no longer have any options. Uh, we've integrated anything that is relevant to um, the actual, the, the core uh, units. We have reduced the number of external examinations. So the SL and HL students will have one less examination paper. Um, and we're also going to be allowing for group work with very careful articulation in the internal assessment. Um, this is what it looks like. Again, I'm sorry it's not that clear, but essentially uh, SL and HL students will have two examination papers only. The first examination paper will have both multiple choice and short answer paper uh, questions. And the second paper will have the short answer question, very similar to the way that the papers are constructed right now. Um, but uh, really, I think the key here is that one thing we have to factor in, and I haven't mentioned this, but we all know we've got to look at student workload. We've got to look at the number of exams. I mean, I think of the chemistry papers now. I think of chemistry paper one and chemistry paper two. We are assessing, in some ways, the same knowledge uh, in a number of questions. Um, and so if we can actually, we, we've worked with our assessment colleagues, the fact that we've reduced the number of papers to two, I'm hoping is going to make a really big difference to our students. We can still assess what we need to assess. We can still assess what's important. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Yep. Well, the mathematical, um, all the mathematical skills and the mathematical approach is still there. It, correct, correct, yeah. But the mathematical requirements are really not changing. Um, there's more emphasis on um, technology. Um, but that's, that's just kind of, that just gives a kind of a quick overview of the way that uh, the, the concepts are going to drive the teaching and learning. I, I'm not quite sure what you would mean by American system. I think in the same way that the mathematics um, was designed to provide flexibility, I think this is designed to provide flexibility for science teachers. And for chemistry, actually, one of my teacher curriculum review participants kind of plotted three different pathways through the chemistry curriculum. Um, of course, yes, yes. Um, so she kind of, we kind of tried to kind of plot what the teaching could look like uh, depending on what your kind of context um, for teaching and learning was. So. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Very good question. And there will be very clear guidelines as to what this would look like. So, for example, uh, let's take a biology example. So, you could have some sort of field work. You could have students collecting many different types of data. And um, so that is a collaborative, that is a collaborative endeavor. But in terms of the research question, every student has to have his or her own research question. They will be working on that data that was kind of collaboratively collected. So the emphasis of the assessment criteria is not going to be on the actual collection of data. It's going to be the research question, but much more um, weighted towards analysis. Uh, an evaluation and then a conclusion. So th the collaboration, um, although it's, we, we say that you know, we're kind of allowing group work, it's, it's, it's quite, uh, it's, it's still, it is, it is limited, it is. But the other, the other thing, I mean, we did have to take on teacher feedback when they've got 30, 35, 40 students 
each of them doing an individual investigation. We've taken the word individual away. We're just calling it a scientific investigation now. Um, so let's take a chemistry example. Um, and I, did, I taught one year of the new current iteration before I moved uh, to the IB. Um, I had 25 students. Each of them were doing their own investigation. And it was, it's, it was too much. I mean, and seven or eight of them were doing titration. So they had all the glassware. Um, and they were trying to kind of figure out, you know, how, how things worked. Um, and they weren't using this apparatus for the first time. So if you have a class, and I say a fairly large class, and they're all, they may have different research questions, but they're all using a similar technique. In chemistry, we have, to, there are certain techniques that you just have to know. It makes sense for them to collaborate and problem solve in terms of setting this up and, you know, looking at the endpoint, whatever it is. Um, so that kind of collaboration hasn't really been, it's, it's not really allowed in terms of this current iteration. Um, I, I know people do it because you have no choice, you have limited resources, you know, some schools have, uh, said, very large classes. So the, the, the group work and the specification for group work will be, um, you know, I know it's not where it could be, but we hope that it addresses some of those challenges with, I think, fairly large science classes and, you know, resource issues. And also, with students trying something for the first time, you know, it is trial and error. It's, it's a whole learning process, and they will learn much more uh, effectively together uh, as, a, as a collaborative problem-solving group. So, yeah, but it's a good question. Yeah, thank you. Okay. I think we have to call it a day. <laughs> so, um, but I hope, I hope I managed to answer all your questions. If you have any follow-up questions, um, I do have, um, uh, I, I can give you my card or you can email me uh, anytime. So anyway, but thank you. Thank you. And yep, thank you very much. <laughs>